Okay, here's the second part of the video. Now, during the 15 minutes that these are sitting, don't waste your time, you're gonna wanna label your plates. Now I have five of them here, but you're actually gonna have 10, okay? And you're gonna label them according to what it says in the book. You're gonna have plate one is gonna be labeled LB plus, plates two through four are LB plus ampicillin, plates five through seven have ampicillin, LB, and the um, X gal or the, um, the gene, okay? So um, you'd have 10 plates total. So while that's sitting for 15 minutes, you're going to want to label your 10 plates and have them all organized so that you know what you're gonna do with them later, okay? So those are, those are labeled while those are sitting for 15 minutes, okay? Um, now after your 15 minutes, you're gonna take your tubes and you're gonna take them to the water bath. So on the, the side of the room, not by the door where you come in, but the other side where we have the incubators, there's going to be a water bath that is set at 42 degrees Celsius, which is just warm enough to shock the bacteria and make their membrane a little bit porous, but not enough to kill it. And we're gonna go through the heat shock method. So we'll pretend that this is in the incubator. So there'll be a rack in the incubator. Now when you label your tubes, DNA positive and DNA negative, that's what everybody's doing. So you need to make sure you put something on the top of the tube to designate that that's your group's tube, whether you use a symbol or initials or whatever it is. Because everybody's essentially gonna be having their tubes in the water bath at the same time, okay? So you're gonna wanna take your beaker with the ice, with the tubes in it, over to the water bath, because you're gonna go from here into the water bath, water bath and back into here. So you're gonna heat shock them for exactly 90 seconds. Now when you heat shock them, you have to agitate them a little bit while they're in there, okay? Meaning just kind of move it a little bit. So maybe if several groups put them in at one time, one person's doing the agitating. If these sit on ice for a little bit more than 15 minutes, that's okay, right? So we have to be kind of organized with this. We're gonna go exactly 90 seconds. You put them in the water bath. You agitate them a little bit. While they're in the water bath, some, one person in the group needs to be timing while the other one is doing this. Okay, exactly 90 seconds. You pull them out, you put them in right in the ice. That's why you want your beaker of ice with you. And then you're going to um, leave them on ice for just one minute, okay? Um, after that minute, you're gonna take them out of the ice. Um, you, this is your rack at your table now. We're not at the water bath anymore, okay? And now you're gonna aliquot 250 microliters of the recovery broth, and it's sitting at room temperature into each of the tubes. So I recommend we use two different pipettes just in case you don't wanna cross contaminate. So we're gonna take 250 microliters and put it in one tube and 250 and put it in the other tube, okay? So just like I said before, it's not the middle slash, it's the slash just below the middle one. And so I'm, this one I'm going to put in a waste container because it has possibility of having bacteria on it. Probably not, but you, you want to be a bit safe than sorry. So remember when we did the calcium chloride, we were able to use the same pipette because we hadn't put anything in the tubes yet. But now that we're using, oh, look at that. That was smarter to leave it there. Smarter to leave it down. Okay, so now I have the recovery broth in there. And that's the one that's probably labeled LB or RB for recovery broth. It's gonna be a yellow in color as opposed to the calcium chloride that's clear, okay? And that's going to sit at room temperature for 10 minutes, okay? In that time that it's sitting at room temperature, start preparing for the next step. So now you have your plates, you have 10 of them. I only have five sitting here, but you would have 10. Now you're gonna to wanna to flip them to where their auger is down but have them in their numbered row, okay? Put one through 10. Don't just have them haphazardly laying around, okay? And what you're gonna be doing after that has sat for 10 minutes, during this period, it's recovering from being shocked, it's taking up the DNA, it's starting to activate, okay? If you look on the picture, you will see that on plates one, two, three, four, and through seven, you put the DNA positive um, concoction that you have made, okay? 
And then in plates 8, 9, and 10, so just the last three, you're going to put the DNA negative. So make sure that when you mark them, you don't rub it off and that it's clear which is positive and which is negative. Now we're going to be using these pipettes. Uh, these are sterile one mil pipettes. It's easier than trying to figure out exactly um, a tenth of a mil here. So you're going to be putting 100 microliters or 0.1 mil of this DNA positive with the E. coli, with the broth, with the calcium chloride, and with the plasmid on those first seven plates. So if you move the other three out of the way, okay? And essentially what you're going to do is you have all 10 plates ready, okay, but not open. You don't want to set, take the plate and lay it. You remember we don't set plates down, lids down. So what I would do is work as a team. Have one person with the pipetter, another person be the person that opens and closes the lid. So you'd have all seven of them lined up and ready, okay? And you could do it all with one pipette if you're careful, okay? So these pipetters, this is the pipetter for the pipette. When you go to pull up the liquid, you're gonna roll it, okay? So you wanna push it up in here, but not so far that you break it, but you wanna make sure it doesn't fall out and that it holds the liquid, okay? So you have one person that's gonna do this part. So with this, point one is going to be the, to the very first line. On my, on one, my pipette, it actually says point nine on my pipette, which is actually point one. Now what you could do, which I might try, is um, pull up all the liquid and then up to, or maybe do like three at a time or something. So let me pull it up to point, I'm gonna go up to point eight and I'll pull up two at a time. So I'm gonna put um, exactly 100 microliters of it in one plate. So when you roll down, it pushes it out. Another 100 microliters in the next plate. So I kind of did two at a time, so then I can go back and do the next two and the next two and the next two, okay? Um, so that's the DNA positive. You would do the same thing with the DNA negative um, using a separate pipette. So notice I was able to use one pipette for all these plates and a separate pipette for all the other plates. So you have all the positives and then all the negatives. As long as you don't contaminate or anything, you're fine, okay? Now for the spreading of it, it says that to take six glass beads. We don't need to do that, we can use our loop. So we'll go back to our flame. And we'll flame our loop. You could have done this ahead of time. Or have somebody flaming the loop while you're putting on the liquid. We're working in mostly groups of three. So if you have one person that's in charge of dispensing the liquid onto the plates, one person that's in charge of holding the lid and closing it, and another person that has the loop sterilized, you're ready to go. So as soon as you, you put the liquid on one plate, the next person can spread it. Basically, when you spread it, you wanna be gentle. Make sure it's not too hot, because we've gone through all this work, we'd hate to fry the bacteria at this point. So what you're basically going to do is you're just going to spread it gently all over the entire surface of the plate. You can kind of turn it a little bit. So instead of using the beads, we're just going to use our loop and spread it. Okay, so you want to spread it all over the surface as much as you can. Being careful not to gouge the auger and not to crack it. And so after you have dispensed the liquid from your positive or from your negative onto your plates, then you can spread it, okay? Now, it says to let those sit for a few minutes. So just put them off to the side and let them sit for like five minutes, go do something else, clean up, and come back. Then what you're gonna do is we always do, you're gonna put them in the incubator upside down. So now that we have 10 plates, we're probably gonna wanna tape them together. So you could tape five and five together. I wouldn't tape all 10 together. Um, write your name on your tape and um, put them upside down in the incubator. Now, let's go ahead and go to, to the second part in the same video. So then when you come back for the next class period, 
you're going to be looking for first of all is there growth of colonies and then are they do they have a color to them and if the um, the, the galactosidase um, gene was expressed you would have a blue color you may also see white colored colonies that that doesn't that means that they were expressing the ampicillin resistance because they're growing on the ampicillin resistance plate on the ampicillin plate but if they're not blue that means that that particular gene didn't express um, so we're going to be looking for growth and for color in the second class period